Talking Shop Take One. Talking Shop Take, yeah, sure. Talking Shop Episode Two, Take One. Are you ready? Yeah, go on for it. Hi everyone, I'm Mark from EKM. And I'm Anthony. Welcome to episode two of Talking Shop. Uh, it's a little while since uh, episode one. Uh, however, I think that's been, there's been a few things. I think the first one was a pile up. It was. And we wanted to see what sort of response we got from you guys. And the response, invariably, was really, really good. We got some good interaction from the comments on YouTube and, and that Someone sort of stuff. Someone did say to me, it was a bit like talking, what is it? Let's talk what? flags or whatever, you know. Talk. You know, oh. <laughs> you know bang theory. Okay, going, yeah, let's talk, talk about flags, flags or whatever. Okay, you totally said that. <laughs> One of my friends. <laughs> really? Yeah. Is that so a good thing? Or a bad thing? I don't know. <laughs> so, but yeah. but yeah, I mean, I mean, the way it's going to run now is I don't know if you guys have seen what Shannon's been doing, uh, who's who's looking after our, our sort of social media side of things at Ecom. So Shannon's every every two weeks is is releasing e-commerce news. Uh, which will be a couple of minutes long, uh, and I guess the idea is after that, um, Nancy and I are going to go into a little bit more detail. So we've got some topics to talk about uh, today. So should we go straight into into the first one? Yeah, the first one. So it's the option to mute ads on Google. Now, I think it's a pretty neat feature. However, I think it's a bit of a bold move by Google, who uh, were. Well, I think it's a bold move. Well, 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 what, what, what is it first of all? So first of all, if, if you're not watching Shannon's previous news things that this is so when you're browsing the internet it's about google remarketing and that so when you go on a website so you might come on the ekm website yep. then as you browse the internet you keep seeing adverts for ekm because it's basically remarketing at you now that's really good as an advertiser but as an end user it can get to the point Annoying. where like, i'm fed up of seeing these adverts now they're, tra- yeah. they're tracking me around and especially if it's a website that you maybe don't want tracking you around the internet yeah. it's, it's a bit <laughs> annoying everywhere you go seeing these these efforts. I remember I once did it years ago for a stag do, for my friend Paul Stagdo. We dressed him up as a, as a woman on the stag do. Okay. And I, I went to Iceland and dressed going. up as a woman. So obviously <laughs> I, I bought like some fake breasts and a dress <laughs> and a wig. And then for months afterwards, it was marketing at me cross-dressing stuff. We're going to have to get that photo of that one out. Yeah, this yeah. So but that was one of those things where in an ideal world, I would have liked to have muted those adverts because I'd, yeah, I'd yeah. bought those products I'd moved on. Yeah, I sure. I was planning on coming back to that. And so the, the way the, the reason I say bold or, or not bold, but a bit of a strange move is obviously Google. They make money from advertising. You know, that's that's invariably yeah. what they do. And essentially, what they're doing is allowing people to turn off those ads. But when you look at into it a, a little bit more, I guess it's it's a smart move, really, because advertising things to people that don't no longer want to see that thing is no good for, for the business that's advertising because they're getting for it. Well, no, it's a waste, you know, it's a waste it, like that yeah, example. It's, 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 a, it's a waste that like, I didn't want to see those adverts anymore mm. and, and it gets it can get annoying. And It's like if you're in the market for a car, if Google knows you're in the market for mm. a car, because of that going looking at, yeah, it's great to market that car. But once you've bought that car, yeah. you want to be able to mute those adverts. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's wasted. Adver- if someone wants to mute your advert, yeah. you continuing to market at them is wasted advertising yeah, it's, money to a certain and it's, extent. And it saves you money as well. Not keep- and one yeah. neat thing with this as well is if you mute it, say, let's just say on mobile, it'll mute it across everything. So your tablet devices, your desktop and that sort of thing as well. So once you do it once on one device, it's... It, I guess it's blanket across your Google account, so yeah. it on I mean, I mean, as an advertiser, remarketing is probably the the most cost-effective way of reaching your customers. I yeah, mean, I, yeah, I mean, I'd certainly. As yeah, say yeah, that, I mean, any, anyone watching this now, if you do have an online business and you are not using Facebook remarketing or Google remarketing, you should be. You should be doing because yeah. it's so cost-effective, and and the way it works from an advertiser's perspective is you basically put a little bit of tracking code on your website you can see the then, results. yeah and then when anyone visits your website it can then remarket at them so and, and you can even segment that to i want to remarket this to people that have already bought from me yeah. this to something else so it might be if you know they've bought the red version of a product you might advertise the blue version of the product yeah. so, i mean mm-hmm. as an advertiser it is honestly it's the mm-hmm. it's so important you're doing this and from a mer- but, from a merchant's point of view as well it, it's good because you know if, if if the consumer doesn't want to see that particular product and they mute that particular product 
you then just fill it with something that potentially they might yeah, exactly. want. You know? yeah. So it's, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe the algorithm's yeah. got it wrong, or maybe you're more. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's it. Now this is this is uh, they are looking at rolling this out uh, across YouTube and and more in the display network as well. And one thing for me that I really, really wish, well, it really annoys me, and I'm interested to get comments on this and, and your thoughts as well. So I don't know if you've noticed, if, you, if you're scrolling through maybe a news website or something like that, there's a video halfway down for an advert, it will start playing, that really winds me up. And sometimes you can't skip it until it, will, you know, you've got, it says 29, 28, 27. Oh, oh yeah, them sort of adverts, I think yeah, that's something, the pre-roll stuff. Yeah, I think that's something that they need to address as well. Um, but the, 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 the fundamental problem though with things like that is because people don't like watching adverts anymore we, no. we, we've got accustomed mm. to you know th- with things like sky plus and things like that in our living rooms yeah nobody mm. watches television adverts anymore no, no. so the one place where they can force yeah, you to watch adverts right. is like the on-demand stuff yeah so if you yeah. try to watch anything on channel 5 on demand or anything like that they, they, yeah, they have these adverts before. and it's mm. the same on there but yeah. Yeah, they should give you the ability to skip them. Because yeah. it's actually wasting everyone's time. It is, yeah, of course it being is. Forced absolutely, to, being yeah. forced to watch or to see an advert that you are not interested in is a waste of the advertiser's time and money and a waste of your time, and it frustrates you. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it certainly. I, I would find it quite handy because I don't mind, I'm one of those people, apart from the videos, I don't mind being marketed to as long as it's relevant. As if long it's, as it's relevant, I have no it's issue relevant, with it. Everyone's happy no to be marketed to. Yeah. If you genuinely are in the market for like a dog or something and you're seeing adverts for dogs, you want to see advert, and that's yeah. that's yeah. when marketing and advertising gets it perfectly right. When you're actually marketing a product to someone who wants your product, yeah, then that's when it's amazing. Yeah, you only ever get annoyed when it's something wrong. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. It, it you want to be marketed at it. Yeah, if, if you know, if I'm yeah. in the market for a new car, I yeah. want to see adverts for cars. Yeah, and I will engage with it and interact with it. But if I'm not in the market for a car, I don't want to see that, and that's when it annoys you. Yeah, of course. Yeah, um, obviously, Instagram have released as well. They're they're sh- shopping ads on, on Instagram. So it'd be interesting to see if they follow suit because Facebook or, or Instagram haven't, haven't done anything like that yet. So you can't no. mute ads there. So, uh, but, uh, but as, as usual, what do you think? Yeah, what do you um, think? Let Com- us know in the below. comments below, somewhere um, below us. Which, um, and let us know what you think. Yeah, which brings us on to topic two. And interesting, this research in this, and I know it's something internally at EKM that, that we're looking do, to do to sort of ref- refine the whole experience. But many retailers uh, fail to communicate with their customers post-sale. Uh, and, 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 you know, we were just talking about remarketing, so I guess it leads us nicely onto this, this, little, uh, this little bit now. So a, a recent study does show that, that, that many people miss that, that second sale, that upsell opportunity, that remarketing opportunity, just because, you know, they're not communicating with the customers post the sale. They put all this effort into getting them to the front door and then getting them through the front door and ordering that particular product. Yeah, and they forget. And then afterwards, there's nothing. I guess there's, there's so much you can be doing sort of post sale, you know, whether it be related products, remarketing. But it's like business studies 101 though, isn't yeah. it? I think, that, I think it's very easy to forget that like, fundamentals of business, especially when you're doing online and stuff and you get mesmerized with Google and Facebook and building these fan- fancy whiz bang websites. Yeah. You forget the fundamentals and like the easiest way to ever make a sale is to sell an existing product to an existing customer. Exactly. That's like the easiest thing to ever do. You know what I mean? And then it gets progressively hard if you're selling, um, an existing product to a new customer yeah. or a new product to a new customer is obviously the hardest one. Mm. See, but so the things as well, it's not, it's not just the selling, it's, and, and, and you know, this is, you know, this is like, we, we certainly companies like us as well, it's the brand loyalty, you know, and even just putting something out that might be, a, you know, an information piece or a white label on, you know, and move away from clothes, but other products or like, you know, let's say you sell a laptop, you know, other things that can go with that laptop, whether it be antivirus software or whatever, you know, and that's well, you want to you want to build that brand advocacy, that brand exactly. loyalty. And so the only way you can't, if you've got, I mean, fair enough, if you only have one product that you sell and when it's sold, it's sold, that's it. it mm. I don't think many companies do. No. I mean, most companies ever sell a product or a service and they want to keep that that brand advocacy going to because the customers love love everything that yeah. they're doing. Mm. And the only way to do it is to keep communicating with exactly, them and keep the them in that ecosystem. Yeah. yeah, whether it be video content as well. We know how powerful video content is and you know blogs and that sort of thing. It's just, it's so vitally important. As I said, this recent study sort of, so it says I don't have any stats, unfortunately. Uh, I did struggle finding the recent study, but um, you know it, it, it's vitally important that, that, that you remind. It's common it's, sense. It's common, it's sense. common sense. I mean, you see so Business many times one, where it? these companies that are really successful, what they actually do is you buy, you don't just buy the product or the service; you buy into a community, you buy exactly. into a lifestyle, don't you? I mean, you don't have to look like Apple and things like that, but mm-hmm. you're buying into a lifestyle, you're buying into a brand because they permanently remark, they're marketing at you. They, 
You, you buy into it. Yeah, but how do. can you buy into it if you're not sending you anything? Exactly. It's just vitally important. And you should have a schedule of what you're going to send when somebody buys something. Yeah. <clears throat> Obviously, you've got your, your regular post-sale email. So, you know, thanks for your order and your item's been dispatched. It'll be with you in so many days or it might be out of stock or something like that. That that's a basic schedule you should have, but you should have a bit of a marketing schedule, sort of four weeks after the initial sale, then another six weeks to make them come back. If and it's it, and it's the ecosystem yeah. as well that you can build mm. by doing this. So what we always say to everyone is, mm. yes, you should have an online shop. Of course, we're going to say that we can. <laughs> but of course, you should also be on other marketplaces. You should yeah. be on eBay. You should be on Amazon, mm. Etsy, what all of them. But by having this communication strategy, and this is where people go wrong, is that they, mm. they think well. I don't need my own website, I don't need my own online shop because I sell on eBay, but it's like, yeah, but by, again, messaging these customers that have bought from you mm. and getting them to buy into you as a brand, you can then funnel those sales through your website. Absolutely. And save the eBay fees and things exactly. like that. Exactly. But it's, you're building a bigger ecosystem. So, mm. so again, I don't want to keep using Apple as an example, but you could buy an Apple product at yeah. Dixon's, you know, PC World or whatever, yeah, yeah. Apple, you can buy it from all different anywhere. places, but you're mm. still buying into that main thing and you might then buy from one retailer a one marketplace and then go and buy the other products direct. Mm. I mean, what, what one great thing as well, I mean, I think I think eBay, eBay and PayPal fees now equates to, I think it's 11% of the sale value. Don't quote me on those figures, I'll double check. I think it's about that. But you think about it, if somebody buys a product off eBay, you know, you are paying those fees and, and eBay's great, and, you know, it's a ready-made marketplace, but to funnel traffic through your own website, why not? You know, in a post-sale email, send them a five percent off voucher or something like that. If you come and buy from the website, so think think about things like that. And I would also say, make sure you personalise that content as well. One hundred percent. I, that I, I was talking to a customer the other day, and they were worried about this fact that when they send emails, it comes from like them and the wife. And the, yeah. the, I don't know if it's. I'm like, that, no, that's exactly what you should be yeah, doing. Yeah, that's right. People yeah. want the personal brand. You know, the world mm. has changed. I mean. I think I've said this before on other things, but it used to be back in the day, you'd have like companies like say Coca-Cola, where Coca-Cola was the product, it was the brand, it was everything. That's all you, and even now, that's all you ever know about Coca-Cola. You know it's Coca-Cola. You don't yeah. know nothing else about them. No. Then the next evolution was like in McDonald's, where you knew about the company and you knew about the products, Big Mac, chicken nuggets, da da da. Mm. And then the next evolution that we're in now is this idea, like like I keep going back to Apple, but you could you could use face. Let's use Facebook as example, where you've got you know. Mark Zuckerberg, the guy that runs it, then you've got the company Facebook, and then you've got all the products that they run, like yeah. you, know, you know, Facebook, Instagram, yeah, WhatsApp, yeah. you know. And you buy and you buy into the full circle of it. If mm. you disliked Steve Jobs or Bill Gates or you probably wouldn't no, use their yeah. products and services. No. And that's the way it is with small businesses now. The actual yeah. way that you can separate yourself more so than ever than from these big yeah, I mean, everyone's up against Amazon. Yeah, they are. Everyone's up against, if you're in the online retail, you're up against Amazon. Mm. The way that you can distinguish yourself is use your one thing that you can do better than anyone else, which is be yourself. Yeah. No one can be you better than you can be you. People buy from people. Play on that. They do. People buy from people. They really do, and, yeah. and people don't play on that. They try no. to be a generic me too business. Let's make, yeah. make, let's make, make, let's look exactly like all the big ones. Look faceless, mm. and you're missing out on the thing that makes you 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 yeah, yeah, unique. You, yeah. 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 No one can be you better than you can be you. Very, very true. Very true. People may try. Yeah, people may try. Which, again, that, that leads us nicely into, into the next point. So, yeah, so I mean, what, what, what do you think about that one? Give us some tips. In, if, if, you, if you're selling online and if you're watching this, we assume you are. Hopefully, you're an ECAM customer. But even if you're not, put some tips and tricks in the comments below. Yeah, yeah. You know, get a conversation going because we'll read the comments. You know, and the comments we got on the last one were really, really good. So, you know, if you can put some comments below, tips and tricks for for the community to look at. That'd be awesome. That'd be really cool. Yeah, yeah, let us know. Uh, and maybe we'll mention some of them in the next talking shop. Who knows? Who knows? In about six months' time. Yeah, hopefully not six months' yeah, time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which leads us on to, uh, on to our next topic. Uh, so JD.com, not to be confused with JD Sports. That's what I thought it was when, yeah. I, first, when I first heard uh, JD.com. That's what I thought it uh, was. Uh, plainly speaking, JD.com are... Uh, the Amazon of, of, of sort of the eastern part of the world. Uh, they've, uh, they've pledged to sort of move into the UK, I think it's by 2019. They're hoping to be here. Uh, direct challenge to Amazon. That's going to be interesting. Uh, it's it going needs to be one. It needs it, one. It does need I mean, one. Competitors are always a good thing, I think. Well, they are. Uh, I mean, we were having this conversation earlier on when we were going through some of the notes for, uh, for this, and, and we're having a chat with one of the guys in the office, and eBay and Amazon. It, are they a direct competitor? 
they're a marketplace, but are they direct competitors? Well, it's funny because it, because eBay used to be, and I don't know if they've lost the way. I, I I don't know if they've lost the way, and they maybe should have separated at some point. But well, eBay used to be the auction. Everyone knows it for the auctions. Yeah, the auction side. The auction yeah. stuff. But it's buy it. You and then buy it now, aren't you? Well, yeah. Well, everyone knew, knew eBay is the auction place. That's where you go and buy secondhand stuff, auctiony type stuff. Mm. And at that it did a really good job. They then saw Amazon becoming this massive retail where everyone buys everything from, and thought, well, we want a piece of that. Yeah. And I think eBay have actually they've muddied the waters a little bit because you don't really know what eBay is these days. No. No, it, the, well, it's, no, you're right. You're, yeah, I never yeah. think of it like it's, it, it, it is a marketplace, but it, it, I agree with you. It's lost it. Well, you're not. Everyone knows what Amazon is. Amazon is Amazon. And, yeah. You know, I, I guess Amazon now is, like, if you if you need to buy something like a generic thing, you look on Amazon. I mean, I do. I don't yeah, yeah. To, oh, yeah. Whereas you're not looking at eBay. So if I wanted to buy, depends what you're buying. Or, or, if you're buying something does, cheap. Yeah, I suppose. Like, yeah. So if, if, I, if I were buying, say, like a tripod for a camera or something like something that you know is coming from potentially, like where JD, you know, something from China, and obviously yeah, yeah. I would probably go on to eBay because I know it'd be cheaper than probably Amazon. Because of it, right? Okay, that's interesting. But is it invariably? Is it always cheaper? I don't know, but that's it, another but interesting. I suppose, they, yeah. and I suppose this is why they've tried to reposition so because they yeah. probably are positioned as, 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 as a, a lower end. Market, but yeah, I don't know if the, yeah. but the auction business is a good business. It is, yeah, it and, is. And they're muddying it by, the, I don't know if they've been true to what they are, I don't know. Okay. They, uh, to me, they'd better separate it. Right, interesting. So, so JD.com, the, the, the Chinese, we'll call them the Chinese Amazon, um, investing one billion um, to move in, into the EU market. And that, that, that sends a clear signal to me um, that there's growth there in the, in the EU e-commerce market. If these guys are willing to sort of Invest one billion dollars, uh, I think it is one billion dollars into the into, into into the market. It's big money. That's big money, and you know it, it it just highlights that if you're not already selling online, you're thinking of selling online, you know, I, I, you're not quite sure if there's space in the marketplace for you, and you're probably there is, you know, because if these guys are willing to invest the it's money, tiny though, is he, I mean, but, it, e-commerce you know, even now is is a tiny percentage of the overall mm, commerce. So yeah. it's only going to get bigger and bigger exactly. and bigger and bigger and bigger, and mm. you know, yeah, I mean, probably actually a, bil- a billion dollars there. It's probably a tiny little investment yeah, compared what, to what could be. What could be, yeah. yeah. So, and the other interesting thing as well is, um, so they're looking to move it, moving into the EU. First place to launch is France. Now, I was thinking, why, why France? Because obviously you've got got the UK, which would be the the most. I would think natural place to go if you if you relaunch a product. Yeah, well, it's Europe, not the UK and Germany. UK you know, and they're, Germany. They're the, in Europe. the only thing I can think of France, and again, I'm speculating at this point. I, I don't know. This is my own opinion, and be interesting to see what you say as well. But I don't know if you guys know. So I, I used to work in logistics, and Charles de Gaulle Airport in France is sort of the main European hub for all freight coming into into Europe. Which makes me wonder, is that why they decided to launch in France could it be, first? Could it be Brexit as well? Or could it be Brexit? Uh, but then following the launch in France, they're opening head office in London uh, and a research centre in Cambridge, which would be interesting. Um, and then and then they're looking to, to move into Germany. Uh, one other thing they said they're going to do as well is, um, which is great news for, for UK exporters, is a pledge to sell uh, £2 billion worth of export into the Chinese market, uh, which opens me that, that's, up that's more interesting actually than yes, them coming them, over here. I mean, exactly. them coming over here, yeah, it's great for Amazon to have a bit of a competitor. But it it's is, the opportunity. And, and the next marketplace for people with online shops to, to push their products onto. Yeah. But it's this, it's this push now that we're seeing in the industry that, that China and that part of the market actually wants UK and English products. Yeah, that's they right. they want our products. Yeah, they whereas do. we've always traditionally thought of it as well, everyone goes and sources the products from there and sells them into Europe. They want these products now. Yeah, they do. And it'll be interesting to see. So, uh, you know, as you guys know, um, and a lot of you guys probably do it yourself, um, is a lot of people buy more uh, cost effective electronics products uh, in China and then import them into the UK. Uh, I mean, we just said them things like tripods, you go to Amazon and eBay and you buy them because they're generally that little bit more, more cost effective. What this is essentially is going to do is. is enable the Chinese guys to sell direct to the UK market. So, you know, I think that might shake things up a little bit. It'll be interesting to see sort of how that goes. Uh, I mean, it's a gamble. I think it's a gamble taking on Amazon. Um, you know, we'll see how it pans out, I guess. Um, comments below, let us know what you think. Yeah, and, what think. And that sort of thing. Smartphones and voice assistants um, driving e-commerce growth. 
Interesting one. So studies show 40% of millennials are using voice assistants. Uh, and it's set to be the next big device to influence buying habits and things like that. Now, I know you and I have discussed this before. And, uh, well, I think and a lot of people internally at came have discussed this to sort of see how it's going to go. So if you ask to buy a bar of soap, is it going to go to the highest bidder type thing? How is that going to work? Well, well, this is it. Like, say, really like Amazon Alexa and stuff. It's going to just... You, you tell it to buy something, we'll do it. I mean, we, you know, we, we've got one in here. So if I say, like, Try it. Alexa... Buy some soap. The top search result for soap is aromas, arteries, and oil, antique, floral, orange blossom soap, 200 grams. It's £3.95, total including tax. Would you like to buy it? No. I also found get off our soap sensitive. It's nice to try to upsell us something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's £4.14, total including tax. Would you like to buy it? No. That's all I could find for soap right now. So to do a demonstration, I could have bought something. Yeah, there, yeah, but yeah, I don't really want to buy some soap. No, but, but, okay. the, but the question is, is when Alexa then recommended those soaps, what's decided which one she's recommended? Is it based on my buying habits? That's I what it, yeah. I don't think I've ever bought any soap on, on Amazon. Or is it based on who's paying the most money to be there? Is it the most profitable products for Amazon? So then would what it go to, it? It to, well, that's a good point, actually. Would it be the most profitable product well, for it, Amazon? Yeah, in, business, or, in business sense, it would. Yeah, or is it good? Or, so Google Home, for example, so I use Google Home. I know you use Alexa, and I use the Google Home devices. You can't actually buy anything off the Google Home device. You yeah. can't buy anything? No, which is very, well, very... Because they don't have their own e-com channel, like... Because they don't have their own e-com channel. So th- I, I'm interested to see how that pans out. I don't yet know if they're going to partner with anybody or anything like that. But you but, would hope that Google would linking with Google, Google shopping, shopping and then yeah, any retailers could use it because that, that is always the funny thing and I know it's like jumping back a little bit on the JD thing but the funny thing with Amazon and why Amazon are always such a concern for people is they're a retailer themselves yeah that, that's the problem <coughs> do you know what I mean they, they, you start selling something on Amazon's marketplace like so you set up a soap shop selling soap Amazon at any point could look at that and say we're going to start selling soap Mm, that's interesting. So, uh, sorry, I'm just just reading an, an article here, just just looking through. So, it, this article here on on Business Insider is saying it, just what we're talking about. You might think Alexa, uh, when you ask it to buy something, um, it would go to Amazon branded products by default. That's not the case. It figures it out um, using a similar algorithm to the one Amazon uses on its website when you search for a product. Yeah, the most relevant. So, the most yeah, relevant yeah. thing, I guess. Do you think it's going to get to a stage where Amazon are going to go, okay, we'll sell to the highest bidder? Or is that going to be the next thing, sort of advertising well, thing? Well, if, if, I mean, like I said, the Amazon one's a funny one because they sell their own stuff. Yeah. And I, I've used it a few times now to buy things. If it's very specific things, I've, I've genuinely used it and I think a lot of people have now. Mm. So that, that is happening now. Now, the more exciting one for most retailers is probably the Google side of it where yeah. they could be on there. And I think, yeah, it's going to go the same as paid advertising. Yeah, it has it's to be, pay, wouldn't it? It's pay to play these yeah, days. I, I, I say it time and time and time again. These days of organic SEO and all this sort of stuff, yes, it's still important, but you can't run your business based on it anymore because, no. again, if it does go to all voice, and I think it, that's the way it is going to go, it's going to go, but still, you're going to have to pay to make sure you do that one. So if you are yeah. selling dog toys, you want to make sure if someone's asking for it, I want a dog toy suitable for a, a boxer, that you are there and that you're going to have to pay for that. Uh, yeah, yeah. You've got to have to so. pay for it. You've got to invest into marketing. And, and this is just an, another channel. This is just another yeah. channel in the same way that you've got Google, you've got Bing, you've got Amazon. It's going to get more and more popular, though, isn't it? I think, you know, on. Four percent. So have you? Have you? I'm assuming you've used Alexa to buy things before, yeah. oh, of course. Yeah. So, yeah. so as I said, I use the, the Google devices. Uh, no particular reason. Uh, you know, they're just the one, the ones that I decided to buy. And to be honest, I was quite disappointed when you couldn't buy anything from it. You can add things to a shopping list. Obviously, yes, you, you can do that. You, you do that with that, but you can't actually buy things. Um, I think my. I think I was going to tell you a funny story earlier on uh, with regards to the Google Home device. Um, so, so me and my partner uh, said we don't. Um, I'm very obviously tech savvy, working for EKM and my tech lover. Said he not so 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 tech loverish, even t- to the point where every time she wants a private conversation in the house, she will throw a tea towel over the Google Home device, thinking he's it's recording big it. Watching. Those big brothers watching. Obviously, I don't think that. I mean, you don't know, do you? But um, it's an interesting one. So 
it, there's no point. I don't think there's any chance of her using it anytime soon. Um, but certainly I will as soon as it's ready and I'm, I'm looking forward to, to sort of seeing how that pans out. Let us know what you guys think in the comments below. Um, you know, it would be great to get every Ken Merchant on, on Google Home when somebody wants I to buy something. I think it's coming. I think it'll be coming. I think it'll be coming. Um, cool. Cool stuff. Yeah, so if you've enjoyed watching this episode, again, keep saying it, but please comment below, like and share this as well. If you think there's anyone who might like to watch this, please do share it with them. We really do appreciate it. And you can subscribe if it's on YouTube. Yeah, you like, like, share. Sure. Whatever the network is, there's, there's a button for it somewhere. And feel free to, to leave anything that you would like Anthony and I to talk about in the comments below. Um, you know, These are things that, as I said, that we've covered in the e-commerce news over the last two or three weeks. Uh, if there is anything specific that you would like us to discuss, leave them in the comments and you know, we certainly will do. Uh, but yeah, thanks very much for, for watching this one. And Goodbye. See you next time. Bye-bye.